Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so about a week ago now, I compared the Ryzen 9 3900X head to head with the Core i9 1900K and 36 games and found on average that the new AMD 12 core processor was just 6% slower. There were a few select titles where the Ryzen processor came out on top, but for the most part, it was just a little bit slower. Still, it was a good showing for Ryzen as the deficit when gaming was negligible for the most part, while it pummeled the 9900K for all of our productivity testing. Following that video, I've been inundated with requests to retest the 3900X with SMT disabled, essentially turning it from a 12 core 24 thread CPU into a 12 core 12 thread CPU, and many are claiming that this significantly improves gaming performance, so much so that the 3900X leaves the 9900K in its dust. I was instantly skeptical of such claims as we've spent quite a bit of time testing first gen Ryzen 7 processors with and without SMT enabled. Even back in 2017, the gains weren't that amazing and often you'd see a performance regression, which ultimately meant disabling SMT wasn't really a good solution. Moreover, since Ryzen's initial introduction, both Windows and games have evolved to better support the core heavy processors. And recent testing has found SMT to be very efficient when it comes to gaming performance. That said, I haven't tested the new Zen 2 processors with SMT disabled, but I am expecting to find a similar story. So for this test, the 3900X has been configured in its out of the box trim using the Wraith Prism RGB box cooler. Both the SMT on and off configurations are identical, of course with SMT's presence being the only exception. So let's quickly go over a few of the games tested before jumping into the performance breakdown with all 36 games. First up we have Prey, and here we see a very impressive 9% performance improvement to the average frame rate with SMT disabled. In fact, even more impressive was the 13% boost we saw for the 1% low result. This meant the 9900K was now only 5% faster than 3900X in this title. Just Cause 4 also saw a very noteworthy 8-10% performance uplift with SMT disabled, and that really saw the 3900X close in on the 9900K. Testing with StarCraft 2 shows no improvement in performance with SMT disabled when looking at the average frame rate, though we do see a rather healthy 8% bump in performance for the 1% low result. Testing with Ferrana shows a 3-4% improvement in performance with SMT disabled, and this was actually enough to push the 3900X ahead of the 1900K in this title. Of course, I should note at this point that we didn't test the 1900K with hyperthreading disabled, so there is a very good chance that doing so will boost the Intel processor performance in this title and other titles where we saw disabling SMT result in a performance uplift. Moving on to Project Cars 2, and here we see a small 2-4% improvement in performance with SMT disabled, and while that is nice to see, the 1900K was in no danger of losing the performance crown in this title. Frame rates when testing with Total War 3 Kingdoms are virtually identical. We see a 1 to 2 FPS advantage in favour of SMT disabled, but that's pretty well within the margin of error. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds sees no more than a 1% change in performance with SMT disabled, so nothing to see here. We see a very small performance regression with SMT disabled when testing with The Witcher 3, though again, just a 1 to 2 FPS difference, so within the margin of error. So I think it's fair to say performance does go largely unchanged in this title. Forza Horizon 4 is a mostly GPU bound game, but even so we see a very small performance regression with SMT disabled. Reducing performance by 3% isn't a big deal here, though it certainly doesn't help the 3900X close in on the 9900K. F1 2019 does see a small performance improvement with SMT disabled. Here the 3900X was around 3% faster, again not exactly a big performance uplift, but it did narrow the gap to the 9900K. Performance in Far Cry New Dawn went virtually untouched, at least we see the same 112 FPS on average. However, as I quite often found, the 1% low performance did take a hit with SMT disabled. We're only talking about a 3.5% performance drop here, but that's really not what we want to see. Testing with Strange Brigade shows less than a 1% change to the average frame rate, though again we do see a reduction in the 1% low figure, this time dropping by 5%. So it seems you will want to leave SMT enabled for this title if you seek maximum performance. Quite interestingly, while the average frame rate was virtually the same with SMT disabled in Battlefield 5, we see quite a substantial reduction in performance for the 1% low result, as frame rates dropped by 14%. So it looks like another title where you really don't want to disable SMT. 
Moving on to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I retested this game more than a few times just to make sure there really was a regression in performance with SMT disabled. Please note that I'm not using the built-in benchmark, rather I test the area of the game that you can see in the top left corner. Here I saw a 7% drop for the average frame rate and a 9% drop for the 1% low, so disabling SMT isn't something you'll want to do in this title. Disabling SMT does help with performance in World of Tanks, here the 3900X enjoyed a 3% boost to the average frame rate, and now the 1900K is just 5% faster. Though again, I should note it is possible to disable hyper-threading and that will likely also improve performance for the 9900K. Fortnite is the kind of game I'd expect or guess that disabling SMT would help with and that looks to be the case. Well, sort of. Frankly, we're looking at results that are pretty well within the margin of error, so not much more to say here really. Hitman 2 is always quite an interesting title that stands out from the crowd for one reason or another. Here we saw a rather large 10% improvement for the average frame rate, and now the 3900X is just behind the 1900K, though the 1% low performance only improved by a mere 2%. Performance in Resident Evil 2 goes virtually unchanged. We did see a 2FPS improvement, but a 1% change is within the margin of error, so safe to say performance remains much the same here. And performance in The Division 2 was also pretty much identical with or without SMT enabled, at least when looking at the average frame rate. We do see a 6% reduction with SMT disabled for the 1% low frame rate though, so again, probably not something you're going to want to do. Something I noticed when testing The Division 2 without SMT was that the 1% low result did tend to fluctuate quite a bit, and that wasn't something I saw with all 24 threads active. Last up, we're going to look at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results, and here we see a nice 7% improvement for the average frame rate. But as we've seen a number of times now, the 1% low performance does take a hit, though this time we're only seeing a 3% reduction in frame rate. Okay, so disabling SMT certainly looks to be a bit of a mixed bag. The numbers were all over the place, and we've only discussed the results for about 20 of the games tested. So let's see how things look when comparing all 36 games in one big graph starting with the average frame rate results. Here we see that on average the 3900X was just 1% slower overall with SMT enabled, so it's standard out of the box configuration. Here we see that the performance margin is within 5% for the vast majority of titles tested. In fact, I'd say we saw a negligible performance difference in 31 of the 36 games tested, so leaving SMT enabled really only improved performance in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, while disabling it saw good gains in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Just Cause 4, Prey, and Hitman 2. However, as you just saw when looking at the games individually, the average frame rate doesn't tell the whole story, so let's see how the 1% low figures stack up. Comparing 1% low performance sees the results swing back in SMT's favour. Now leaving SMT enabled provided a 1% performance uplift on average across the 36 games tested. This means we saw a 5% or better performance improvement in 8 of the games tested, with a 5% or larger performance drop in just 4 games. So as we found 2 years ago when testing performance with the Ryzen 7 1800X, disabling SMT can indeed be beneficial, but your mileage will vary depending on the game and it's just as likely to cause a performance regression. I think it's fair to say what SMT doesn't do is allow the Ryzen 9 3900X to beat the Core i9 1900K in games, or even catch it. I mean, it can help reduce the margin in certain games, but I think overall it doesn't really help it catch up. And I, for one, aren't too fussed about that. We don't need more ways to justify the purchase. The 3900X does what it does well, and if you're after a solid all-rounder, the Ryzen 9 3900X processor is it. As we've already seen, the 3900X is plenty fast enough for gaming, and where it lacks a few frames, it makes up for with significantly improved productivity performance and the ability to tackle more tasks simultaneously. It also runs much cooler, consumes less power, and works just fine with the provided box cooler. Based on everything we've seen here, I don't recommend you disable SMT unless you know doing so improves performance in the games you'll be playing. I'm not 100% sure why turning SMT off hurts 1% low performance in so many games. At first, I thought maybe it was because you go from a situation where the active threads required by the game can be utilised in a single core complex die with SMT enabled, to then a situation where those threads are spread across both CCDs with SMT disabled. 
However, that doesn't seem to make sense given that the 3900X generally offers better gaming performance than the 3700X, and we believe that's because it has two CCDs, which increase the L3 cache capacity as well as the right lanes to the IO die. I've reached out to AMD for their take on this, and if I hear anything back, I'll let you guys know in a pinned comment down below. Overall, not much more to say on this one. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like, and if you want to support the channel more directly, then you can do so over on our Patreon page. A few cool perks over there. Go check it out if you're interested. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.